Welcome to this episode of The Tech Table. Today we're going to talk about two very important topics. One is project management, and another one is a brand new codec that we have from GoPro called the GoPro Cineform Codec. And to really go over these topics in depth, I've teamed up with a friend of mine, Devin Graham, and I'm using one of his projects to sort of show how to manage a large project like this, as you can see, as well as what a new codec like this will actually do for you. Now, for those of you not familiar with the Cineform Codec, it's been around a a long time. It's a very high quality Wavelet codec and it's now owned by GoPro. So we now refer to it as the GoPro Cineform codec and I'm very excited about it. I've been working with this codec for many years and it is amazing that we now have it in Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and jump into the tech table and I'll show you how it works. Okay, let's take a quick look at what it takes to manage a project like this. I'm gonna jump over to my G-Speed Studio Drive and take a look at the folder that's in there. And if I double click on the folder, you can see all the parts that are in the folder. Uh, I'm gonna go back out one step before I do that and show you how large this folder is. So if I go in here, you'll see that the folder is 1.1 terabytes on this disk and that actually consists of a number of different things that you try to manage a project of this size so as you can see when Devin and crew uh, were out on location it's a three-day shoot uh, including multiple cameras uh, one thing Devin does for his Devin Graham site is give you a great behind the scenes to sort of show you uh, those guys in action and different cameras and lenses and things that they do I always recommend people take a look at his behind the scenes stuff but you can see if you just take a look at some of this it's typically shot on Canon 5D and cameras like that. And uh, each of these days that are in here, if I go in here and take a look at that, uh, he's got some GoPro footage, as I said, uh, from typically a Hero 3 Plus or a camera like that, uh, shooting a lot on Red Dragon uh, 6K footage, uh, as you'll see shortly. And if I just take a look at what's in here, just a very typical red r3d folder structure and if i just do a get info on that that one folder is 250 gigs if i take a look at the other folder that's in here again this is just day one for one camera uh, that's 175 gigs so you know there's just a lot to manage on each of these days so let's jump into premiere pro and see what this looks like Okay, so here you can actually see the project. It's a very typical project for Devin. It's, you know, five or six layers and, you know, anywhere from, you know, two, two minutes, 40 upwards to three and a half minutes. So this looks like a fairly average project. And again, folder structure is pretty much exactly what you would, uh, you would expect, fairly organized. And at this point, um, I just want to point out that as I play some of this back, let me go ahead and do some of that for you. So as you can see, if I jump up to my sequence settings, this is a full-on 6K project coming from the Red Dragon camera. Let's take a look at how we export this out uh, in the new GoPro Cineform format. So let's just do our typical file export media. And the first step you want to do is switch your format to QuickTime. Even though we're using the new GoPro Cineform format, it actually uh, is wrapped in an MOV wrapper on both Mac and Windows, so you'll find it under the QuickTime format. Uh, it still has all the quality and everything you would expect from the traditional Cineform codec, but again, it's just under the QuickTime wrapper. So now what you'll notice is I've got some presets here where I can match it to the source, which is great, which you'll keep it at 6K. I'm going to go into the video tab here, and if I click on this of course this is where you find everything that falls under the QuickTime umbrella all sorts of different types of codecs on the Mac you'll get ProRes get some of the other formats that Apple QuickTime provides but again what you'll see that's brand new is this new GoPro Cineform what I call our finishing codec I mean it is a beautiful codec as I mentioned so I'm going to click on that and show you a few options as I go down here. You 
do have a quality slider. I find that quality four is fine. It's great. It allows you to compress and recompress and continue to work with the files if you have to do different uh, generations with different things that you're working on. If you really want to just crank that up to five, if you just want to make sure you have the, the best possible quality and disk space is not an issue, then go ahead and do that. It's absolutely fine. You'll also notice that these checkboxes now are telling me that I'm locked in to the source settings. So if I needed to uncheck that, that would allow me to modify that if I wanted to. I'm just going to keep matching my, my source settings that are there. Another really important thing to point out is if you need an alpha channel. So if you've got things in there from After Effects or say Photoshop or other things where you want to maintain an alpha channel on some of those layers, you can come in here and click on this and say, well, I want to keep that at 32 bit or higher. I don't have any alpha channels on here, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that at 24 bit. You'll notice the maximum render quality is not checked. The reason it's not checked is you don't need it all the time and it actually increases in code time. So you'll notice if I hover over this with my mouse, a tool tip will come up that says gives better quality scaling but increases in code time. What that's trying to tell you, again, is if you have a lot of scaling going on in your project, then you want to go ahead and check that. If, if you use Warp Stabilizer a lot, which I know Devin and Parker do at Team Supertram, I would suggest to them, as I normally do, go ahead and click that, because that will help your scaling when you're scaling out with uh, the Warp Stabilizer. But if you're not using any sort of scaling up or down in your project to any big degree, then just go ahead and leave that unchecked, which is its default. So let's go ahead and queue that up and send it over to Media Encoder. And from here, I can just go and click Encode. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of things while we're in the Media Encoder, just to let you know we are working on presets for the new GoPro Cineform Finishing Codec, so you have a way to get to these fairly quickly. So you're basically going to see that you've got a preset to match your source settings with and without an alpha. So not a huge deal, these are easy to create yourself, but just wanted you to know we'll be watching those and uh, creating more and more of those for you. Let's jump back over to Premiere Pro and I'll show you a couple other cool things. So let's talk about how to project manage a project of this size once the project is complete. And as you might have seen in our recent announcements, we have a brand new project manager. So I'm going to go down to File, Project Manager. You can back up all of your sequences if you need to. In many cases, sometimes you have working sequences just to help you create the final sequence. So my suggestion is just keep what you need for this particular project as we project manage this. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep the final. I can keep all the files exactly like they are in their original format if I want to keep them as R3Ds uncut and just throw out unused clips, which in this case is going to be really important. I might want to include my audio conform files, so for those audio files I don't want to have to recreate those peaks. Preview files if I happen to have done any renders and browse this to a location and copy uh, that whole new project. Again, it's a collect and copy. But for me, what I really want to do is trim those red R3D files. So if I come down here and I click on Consolidate and Transcode, uh, you can do it by individual clips. I might want to do it by whatever the sequence setting is here. In my case, that's going to be better for me. And I want to go ahead and use that brand new GoPro format. So I want to go down here and I want to choose GoPro Cineform. Again, uh, what I showed you in AME, you have the two choices. I don't have any alpha channels going on here, so I'm going to try to save some disk space. And I'm just going to go with GoPro Cineform as my new finishing codec. So at this point, I can come down here and just click on a folder, and let's jump over to my, my G Speed here, and I'll create a brand new folder. And that's where I'm going to now perform that transcode, trim those clips. I like to have some handles on there. I'm going to put like 100 frames of handles on either side of those clips. That's a couple of seconds on either side just to give me some wiggle room in case I, uh, I want to do any adjustments later. If I happen to have image sequences in there from some animation or thing that I've done, I can go ahead and convert that to clips as well. You'll also notice when you're in this mode, you get convert After Effects compositions to clips, which is really cool because if you use a lot of dynamic 
dynamic length, we're going to go ahead and render and replace those, if you will, or render those into full movies so you don't have to worry with that if you know that you've got those the way that you want them. So really, really great way to manage this. And click OK, analyze the project, and let's take a look at the result. So let's jump back over to the GSP drive and, and open this up. And let us look and see all of those R3Ds now are actually Cineform files. Before you can play back GoPro Cineform files outside of the Adobe applications, you have to download a small 83 megabyte file from GoPro's website. The application is called GoPro Studio. You might already have it if you own a GoPro camera. It's one of the tools that you use to update your firmware. Once you load this application, it will go ahead and put the two necessary files inside the QuickTime folder that allow those files to be decoded. So if I double click on this, I just want to point one thing out. If I double click on this, you'll notice that QuickTime on the Mac can't read this because it's trying to read it as QuickTime 10. And again, QuickTime 10 doesn't really support codecs outside of QuickTime 10 very well. So what you have to do in this case, again, only on the Mac, Windows users don't have this issue, just right mouse click and open with QuickTime 7, and you'll notice it's gonna be a huge file, uh, too large for my screen here because it's 6K. I'm gonna come over and just say fit the screen here so I can see what's going on. This is fantastic. All of these clips now uh, are just managed from the original and trimmed in size. So I've really been impressed with the quality of this codec. Again, to me, it is fantastic finishing codec. Let's go ahead and open up the project and take a look at it. So it actually gave me a new project file in there. Comes up fairly quick, as you see. All the media is already loaded. Again, it was able to load it that fast because all of the media has been consolidated. And if you're curious, let's take a look, now that I think about it, let's take a look at the total size of this folder to see why it opened so quick. And if I do a get info here, you'll notice from 1.1 terabytes, I'm way down to now 43.69 gigabytes. Again, a nice size project, but totally manageable when you consider everything that we've got going on in this 6K project. So that, that whole idea of project managing and taking a 1.1 terabyte three days worth of shooting and know that I now have the project down to 43 gigabytes that I can now store is really fantastic you'll see that I pretty much have everything that I would need, and as far as playback goes, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So that's a quick look at what it takes to uh, work with the new GoPro Cineform codec and a little on the project manager. We'll see you next time on the Tech Table.